Welcome back, everyone. It's theCUBE live in Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay. Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante here. Day two of theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies World. We've had amazing conversations, as we always do, but you know, because you've been, you've been tuned in since last night. Lots of announcements yesterday, as you know. Lots of announcements, big announcements this morning. We're going to be unpacking some of those in case you missed the keynote. Caitlin Gordon joins us, one of our alumni. We've got two alumni actually here. Caitlin's back, VP of Product Management. Cross-platform software installations at Dell Technologies, and Maggie Kapoor is back as well, Director of Multi-Cloud Product Management at Dell. Great to have you ladies back on theCUBE. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. It's so good to be back again. Isn't it great? Yeah. It's like yesterday. I know, it feels like <laughs> yesterday. Maybe it was. Oh, Not world. Vegas yesterday yeah, though. No. It's like a week ago. Oh, Vegas okay. yesterday. Yeah, that, that, that's a whole <laughs> a separate conversation. <laughs> so yesterday we were on main stage talking about cloud to ground, ground to cloud, air traffic control. Talk about some of the nuggets that were announced today. Yeah, today we really got to unpack that. Jeff's keynote is always a lot of fun because we really get to show what we talked about on the first day. So we really got to bring that, that ground to cloud strategy to life and really show our some of the new SaaS software that we've been building. Uh, and it's really the, the evolution of what we've been talking about since last year when we talked about Project Alpine and now we officially have gone from project to product. And ultimately that ground to cloud strategy, it's all, how do we help our customers really unlock that workload flexibility. Be able to choose where to deploy your workloads, be able to choose the right location, whether that's on-prem or a public cloud. And the biggest thing that we've heard, and really the genesis of that Project Alpine and now this new Apex storage for public cloud is how do we help unlock some workloads, which is the native storage services in the public cloud are great for a lot of things, but mission critical workloads, scalable fire workloads, is just not something that we've been able to solve for. So now with the Apex Block and Apex File for AWS and Block for Azure, we can now help our customers bring those workloads and really unleash those workloads in the public cloud and have that consistent operating model from on-prem into the cloud. And we didn't stop there. I'll let Maggie pay off a whole lot more of the details because it is her baby, but we also announced the Apex Navigator yeah. for multi-cloud storage and the Apex Navigator for Kubernetes new software, part of the Apex console, that really is that air traffic control. How do we bring a really consistent and simple experience to our customers as we bring that software to the cloud? Awesome, Maggie, walk us through the demo that you gave on main stage this morning. Talk to us about from an infrastructure perspective, but also the value in it and how, to Caitlin's point, how are you helping customers unlock the value in their workloads regardless of where they are? Yeah, no, it was very exciting and so fun to be on stage to be demoing. You know, what we have been working on, it's been a truly exciting opportunity to be able to do that. Um, so really, you know, what we demoed was, it was a four part demo where we started with, as Caitlin said, we have really moved our from our project Alpine to actually productizing it. So taking our products, you know, how we are software defining them and making them available in the public clouds so that our customers have full control over their data wherever they need, right? So we, we talked and we showed how customers can deploy our storage software in the public clouds of their choice with you know, whatever performance capability they would perform, like to, like to see with that, um, and really you know, getting it deployed in the cloud. We then also talked about once we have deployed it, what all we can do with this data, right? Being able to move data from one location to another so that customers really have the ability to have portability of data, right? They don't have, I mean, you don't have to have the decision of where the data ultimately needs to live. It can live at one place, things change, you need to move it to a different location. We can let you do that. And so we, we walked through, um, you know, because we were walking through a block storage example, we walked through volume level mobility, but if you had to do a file deployment, you could do file level mobility as well, you know, and it's bi-directional, so you can go from on-prem to the cloud, cloud back, or even between clouds, right, which is pretty incredible. We then also showed how you could do that in a containerized world, right? Because we know more and more mission critical applications are being containerized. And that requires persistent storage. So how do you take that and, and have the ability to move the entire container along with all its underlying data? So we talked about the Navigator for Kubernetes, which is very exciting. I know I was here last year talking to you about uh, that, so I was very excited to see that yeah. 
you know, in action. You know I love this conversation because in late 2021, we sort of coined this term super cloud and we, then we got a lot of grief for it and we said, well, we got to define this, we did. And then we saw it last year in the form of Project Alpine. We said, okay, this is very super cloud-like. And some of the criticism that we get is people say, ah, oh, this is just SaaS. It's not just SaaS, it's a set of services that actually has a, a, a purpose-built PaaS layer to do things like make it consistent across the, the platform, across the clouds, uh, do recovery, all these types of things. My question is, what's the deployment model for these services? Is it, are you instantiating in, instances, the full stack in each cloud? Is there sort of a single global instance? What, what, are, you, what are you doing and or, and or what are you envisioning? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I'll start with it and then you can add all the color that I missed on top of that. So the easiest way to think about it, at least where we're starting, is how do we help our customers manage their software-defined storage on the public cloud infrastructure that they already have? So it's in their own instances, right? So they're going to be paying AWS and Azure for that, for that IaaS, essentially. And then they're going to use, our, use Navigator to deploy our Apex public cloud storage in their public cloud instance. And that's their control plane, that, which, that's right. which can live anywhere I want it to, or does it live on-prem? Yeah, so that the actual control plane, so this new SaaS offers, the Apex Navigator from us, is actually built on our own cloud. So that is our SaaS infrastructure, and truly is, really you're just paying for that, that's a subscription where you get that ability to have that deployment and that mobility, and it's really to ease that and for being that true cloud experience to that Apex storage for public So that's cloud. in Dell data centers. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do that's people right. ask you, the customers ask, like where's it, gonna, where's it gonna live, do they care? Interestingly enough, I think it's gonna start coming up more. I think the data sovereignty, the security issues is really starting to open up a better understanding of actually wanting it maybe not on a public cloud infrastructure, that we built this SaaS in our own data centers, we are accountable for that infrastructure. Um, and it's certainly a conversation about where those live today, where they need to expand to into the future, and how do we really evolve? I mean, it's the, really the beginning of a journey of us becoming yet a new chapter as a real software company, because these are standalone software offers that we're bringing out there. So it's a single control plane that lives on Dell's data centers, and then the individual stack of the cloud service provider is, is, is unique, but you make it consistent across, right? Right, exactly. So one of the things, and, and I do want to call out that, yes, it's the Apex Navigator, but it's actually part of the same Apex console that we, un, uh, uh, you know, that we showed last year on stage. So it's really extending the Apex console to have these capabilities that we're building with Navigator. And think of that as an orchestrator that's going to orchestrate this complexity of cloud that customers might have, right? You might have a few instances that you're running on-prem, you might have a few instances running on AWS, potentially in Azure. This is a place, uh, a centralized control plane where you can see all your assets across everything, whether you're doing it on-prem, in Colo, Edge, or even the public clouds, right? Can you guys elaborate on the customer involvement in the productization of Alpine? I know that, that Dell is very, very customer focused, very customer first, your customers are a big part, and everything that you do is for them. But talk about, share with us your thoughts on the customers really in the driver's seat, if you will. Yes, definitely in the driver's seat, sometimes like passenger seat, driver's seat. <laughs> Uh, Backseat driver. This is, yeah, and it, you know what, it's interesting because it's been informed, I think, almost from three dimensions. On the one hand, bringing our software to the public cloud is not new to us. We've had our data protection software, which I know you love, in the public cloud for a long time, right? We protect over 17 exabytes of data in the public cloud today. So we're not new to that, and we've learned a lot from our customers. That's where they pulled us first. They needed that long-term retention, that backup use case. And then over the past few years, what we've heard a lot more is kind of two veins. Either I have mission critical databases and applications that I run on my data center today, they've got scale, performance, and resiliency. When I try to move those into the public cloud, it breaks. It can't meet the needs of what I have, right? We've had some of the early adopters, things like Oracle databases, or looking at epic workloads, just can't make that bridge. And so the, on the block side, it's largely been a, and trying to enable a lift and shift type mentality, and we've had very passionate <laughs> customers <laughs> really helping us and driving that innovation and have informed not just getting our software to find storage there, but what the experience needs to be to support that. And on the file side, we see it very industry specific, right? Media and entertainment, healthcare, the places where file is, you know, file data is their business, but they need to take advantage of the analytics in the, in the cloud. 
you know, if we know one thing, the file services, storage services in the public cloud are probably the weakest point. That just getting that enterprise class scale and performance and resiliency in the cloud is something that's really tough. And our customers have officially pulled us into needing to bring that 1FS technology, which is what powers that Apex uh, file storage in AWS, bring that in there. They can still use those analytic workloads, but they can have that up to a petabyte scale in a single namespace and the seamless mobility back to on-prem. We, we listen to our customers strongly and they make sure we do and we, they are, we are, they're helping bring us along in that journey and, and really grateful that they're in that driver's seat and passenger seat and we get a seat somewhere in the back to try to go with them. Do, do you expect the typical use case is, is that hybrid, sort of a good, some data on-prem and I want to connect to, the, to AWS, let's say, or I want to connect to GCP or Azure, sort of as a, a, a one, one to one, or do you expect more of a true multi-cloud you know, use case? I'd say most of our customers that we've been talking to are very much interested in having the ability to connect the on-prem to the clouds, right? And they might have, they might be using multiple clouds, but not for the same applications. So they, they might want to just go from on-prem to AWS for a certain application, but for Azure to, for another one. So most of the customers we're seeing that, that as a use case. I think what resonates the most for our customers though is this ability to move data, right? Right? The, the ability to move data at a volume level, at file levels, at container level, whatever their, their application is, how do we help them like really simply move data from one place to another so they have full control over their data instead of it being locked down at one, one place, right? And so every time we've been talking about our, our you know, offerings, whether it is the Apex public cloud storage or the Navigator, they're very excited about us being able to deliver that functionality to them. And it, did you develop a new high-speed data mover to, for this, or was it an existing tool? It's what I, I like to call the cloud-optimized mobility. Uh -huh. I made that up, though, that's unofficial, so uh -huh. that's not on <laughs> We're very proud of it. We're very down. proud of it, though. <laughs> they don't let us do that the officially, calm. but. <laughs> <not bad. laughs> But really, uh, when we know we have a lot of different ways to do, make good use of that that network connection. And the, the the important thing is to really t make good use of that that network connection that you have. So we have in both cases on the block and the file side, we're leveraging very efficient mobility uh, technology so that we can minimize that that b bandwidth required. And, and how about the security model? With the, you know, you've got the shared responsibility model. You got three clouds. You got three different shared responsibility models. Are you taking care of that, or is that the customer's responsibility, or the cloud's responsibility? Who's no, Maggie's passionate on this one. <laughs> yes, so we have, you know, very, we are taking very good care from a security perspective, keeping zero trust framework in mind as we're building these products. So, you know, it starts with the IAM model or the, uh, you know, the access model. We're relying on our customers to provide their IAM, uh, you know, that integrates with our IAM so that they can actually say, which, which operators need to be part of that model. So we're actually federating with customer's identity uh, using our, so all of this also shows up as a premier. So if you are a Dell premier account customer, you log into the premier to get access to the console and the na navigator functionality. So it's all being integrated at one place with our Dell customers using their federated identity. So everything that we're working on, we're, we're integrating with IAM, having our back, as well as SSO. So one of the things that I'm super proud and excited about is that we have painlessly worked to make sure that we truly give customers a single experience when they come into the Apex console. So everything from going from you know, the console navigating themselves into the element managers of the products or even from monitoring and observability capabilities into Cloud IQ, all of these uh, you know, uh, experiences are linked together using SSO. So we have it has been an incredible journey the last few months to ensure that we actually do this right so that the customers have that single sign-on experience and keeping security in mind. So you've abstracted the, the cloud single sign-ons and, and then you create a, a, a Dell single sign-on or is it? I think there's two different pieces, it, right? Yeah. What you're talking about is the logging in from our experience yep. and then you want to talk about how the, we, we handle the credentials on the cloud side as well? Correct. So the, Customers come in and use their credentials. We're not 
storing uh, customers' credentials yeah. into our uh, environment because we want to make sure that customers feel safe coming in because we also understand it's a SaaS platform that's hosted by Dell, so we're taking full, um, you know, uh, we're, we're really being very careful on how we're handling uh, that. And, and availability, can I buy this today? I mean, you, well, we might take the order, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> availability is in the second half of the year. Second half, yes. uh, okay, and you still, uh, you haven't released pricing, have you? Or? We have not released yeah. pricing yet, yeah. I, 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 I do want to clarify, we, the public, uh, the block storage in public cloud is yes, available yes, right. today. Good, that's a very good clarification, <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and the navigator aspect is coming in the second and, half. And is it, what's the pricing model? Can you, Share that. I mean, the, at the highest level, these are—it's all software, so not a surprise. These are all subscriptions. Uh, really simple to think about on the storage side. We're really looking at dollars per terabyte subscription model, and essentially, with the new Navigator model, it's going to be a tiered subscription over time. With that base subscription, it's actually essentially hard bundled in with that software-defined storage. So that Apex Public Cloud storage is a subscription, and part of that is actually the base Navigator model as well. So really trying to simplify not just the experience of the product, but even the procurement experience as well. Uh, that's important, I mean, uh, you know, no matter what pricing model you pick, it's not going to be perfect, as you well know, but you got to get as close as possible yeah. to where, how the customers want to consume. That's so, right. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Well, so many announcements, so much going on. Talk about, in, in the last minute or so that we have, share your thoughts on really how this is enabling customers to get that full visibility and, and go from multi-cloud by default and kind of chaos to that strategic by design that everyone's talking about. Do you want to start? Uh, sure, yeah. I think what is very exciting about what we're bringing is really what I was talking about, bringing a consistent experience no matter where your data lives, right? So that is really the key to what we're bringing. How we're going to expand that in the future is like really bringing all our block, file, object, data protection capabilities and have them available to our customers in all clouds, right? That's really our goal. This is what we want to give, and give them a really connected experience, again, no matter where, where the data resides. It'll Got be it? fun talking to a customer next year about this at yeah. Yeah. 24 Tech World. They're Absolutely. very excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think ultimately it comes down to choice, yeah. but also consistency, and, and it's kind of invest, it's investment protection of, of the infrastructure you're buying and of your people, probably most importantly. Ultimately, that's what we think multi-cloud by design is going to mean is, that means the people that you have can be the people that manage your on-prem and in the cloud, and that you've simplified that, and you haven't had to make a choice based on the resources you have, you make the choice best based on what your workload needs, and your people can support that. Nice. Ladies, thank you so much for joining Dave and me and packing some of the announcements, sharing with us why you're excited, and like we said, it's great to see going from project to product. Congratulations on that. We look forward to hearing the next year of news that it brings. Thank you again. Thank, thank you, you for having us. All right, our pleasure for our guests and for Dave Vellante. I'm Lisa Martin. Up next, Travis Hill joins us, Douglas Phillips as well, talking about Dell and Microsoft and their shared vision for hybrid cloud. See you in a minute.